Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Advisor. And today I'm so excited because we have a very special guest with us. It's Dr. Marcella Romando, and she is a wonderful person who has a lot of knowledge in a lot of different topics, especially when it comes to eating disorders. And today she's here to join us. We are privileged to have her on the show, and she's going to talk about eating disorders and other topics that are related to it and give us some great advice to help us with our daily lives and to make our lives better. So Dr. Masella, tell us a little about yourself and what you do. Oh, thank you, Stacey. I'm so excited to be here. Uh, let's see, I'm, I'm a psychologist um, as, 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 um, as you introduced me and I specialize with folks working with eating disorders. I also work with folks with, uh, with body image distress too. And so folks who may not have an eating disorder but just have this constant relationship with, with their body and tell me, I just want harmony with, with my body. I do a lot of trainings. Uh, so I go to mental health clinics to talk about eating disorder. Like I also go to schools and various settings. Um, I'm a consultant and I work with folks that, um, that may be seeing a person with an eating disorder um, as a therapist or as a teacher or as a parent. And so, um, so that's what I do as like just my, my, my passion, my work, but other things about me, um, I'm a martial artist. Um, I am also a bunny lover. Um, I volunteer at a bunny shelter every week. Um, makes me happy. They're cute. They're cuddly. They're funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, um, and, you know, I, and I, it's interesting. I ask this about with all my clients and I think feel like I should like ask this to myself of like, what's important to me? What, what are my values? And so when someone says, tell me about yourself, it's like, well, some of my values are curiosity and kindness. And my big value is just community and the collective power that, 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 that we can do and that we can harness to bring in people whom that we don't hear from that, that need to be seen and heard. And these are like a lot of marginalized communities. Um, also like we have a power as a, as a community for, for change. Um, and I feel especially important to say that now with so much happening in our world that feels very disharmonious. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I do hold on to that even when it feels, it feels hard. Yeah. You know, I, you know, you talk about eating disorders and that's something that so many people struggle from. And I find it, you know, very important to address this topic because so many people are just struggling, whether it's something that happened from their childhood years, some traumatic event that occurred during their life. You know, it, there's so many reasons, you know, that we have, you know, food disorders and we struggle tremendously. And sometimes it's just personal insecurities that we just don't like ourselves or don't like something about ourselves or someone in our life might tell us that we're not good enough. We're not this, we're not that. And, you know, what are some of the things that you see in our society that people struggle with, with food disorders? And, and maybe you can give some insight on, on how to, you know, focus on overcoming food eating disorders because people struggle so hard and I know people who have they go up and down up and down they lose 70 they gain 70 they they lose 40 they gain 40 they struggle their entire lives just trying to go through the their daily struggles in life and they want to they want to feel better they want to look better but they just have a hard time doing it and you know what's some of your insights and thoughts about this oh. Thank you uh, for asking, and thank you for for how you you frame that. Um, I, I feel it, it just um, the and what I um, what I held on to with what you said, Stacy, was a part of like I'm not good enough, and I feel like if we can really just hone that and understand that, because there's so much people say when I when they're saying I'm not good enough, they're saying I am not valued, I'm unlovable. I deserve to be thrown away. I'm I I I, I deserve to be not treated well. Yeah. I don't like myself. Um, and so when we like really hear that and and know that like many of us, all of us, like have have dealt with that on on some level. Yeah. Uh, that helps us understand eating disorders more because what has been the hardest part for me, and it's gotten better in the 
I would say in the past five years, but when I first started working in the field 15 years, I would have really what felt like strong arguments with people about who gets an eating disorder and, and who doesn't. And it was, yeah. it was this myth that only um, rich white girls get eating disorders. And it was like, no, other people do not get eating disorders. I know you're smiling like, okay, yeah. <laughs> and, and the damage that has caused um, of just like, well, absolutely not. We don't see this in our communities or no, we, you know, men don't get eating disorders. I mean, just all these messages and, and, and this, this stereotype and this myth about who gets an eating disorder and, and who doesn't. Yeah. And because of that stereotype, a lot of damage and harm has been done where a lot of people have not been diagnosed, have not been treated, and have had chronic eating disorders, even if they don't have a full blown, um, I'll call it medical risky eating disorder, that constant dieting is like losing weight, gaining weight, losing weight, gaining weight. That just sounds like a very unhappy, it is, it sounds like an unhappy life. And yeah. it is an unhappy life. Uh, so I think what I, I ask folks to, um, to first, like, um, to first think about of a eating disorder is to think about like, who do you think gets one? And then ask folks like, can you be curious? Can you be ready to unlearn pretty much so much of what we think about eating disorders? Yeah. You know, we see all those after school specials of the very thin white person with an eating disorder. And it's usually focused on anorexia. And you see this kind of like this very emaciated mod person. Um, and to point out more that a lot of people with eating disorders are not emaciated. Yeah. Um, a lot of people with eating disorders are doing a lot of harm to their bodies and not realizing it. Um, and so for us to really take a step back and, 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 and realize, okay, who is getting an eating disorder? Who is, who is not? Um, or who do we think? Um, and to, um, and to look at all the ways we talk about food and bodies in our society. Yeah. Um, and to note that it, while it, while many times it started off very personally, um, we have a culture that really maintains and, and actually really encourages eating disorder behavior. Yes. And then there's all kinds of mixed messages around, around food and bodies um, and speaks very disparagingly about aging. I mean, it's, um, it's pretty relentless. Yes. Uh, and then kind of also like this other message of, and if you care about all these things, you're a shallow person. I'm like, okay, it must be, I, I, I do this sometimes. I, I was just thinking about like, like if, if, if an alien were watching planet earth, they'd be like, it's wow, human beings, how do they operate in that? Yeah. They, get, they get constant mixed messages about how to eat and live and be yeah. in their body. I think that's why so many aliens stay away from the United States and, and, and Earth, planet Earth. <laughs> I'm funny. They're like, this place is really messed up. Yeah. I'm going to Platon, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't blame them, you know. That's why we haven't seen any lately, because they said, I'm not going there. <laughs> I do think that, you know, I think our, our society definitely gives a lot of mixed messages. You go into any restaurant, you know, we were talking about this briefly, you know, I went to a restaurant the other day to have um, lunch with a girlfriend and the amount of food that they gave me, it was delicious, the food, but the portion size was for three meals. You know, I could take that, I could split that up into three days worth of lunches if I wanted to. And, but people do that in most restaurants all the time. And, you know, you have a lot of people that, you know, were brought up to eat everything on your plate, you know, don't leave anything over, you know, and that was the old generation speaking in our ears, you know? Right. And so many people, especially my parents, they, you know, and, and their grandparents, they were the first one they, I used to hear the stories. They ran to the table because they had come, came from big families. It was first come first serve. And if there's any, and if you missed it, you lost it, you know? And so, you know, they, they constantly ate everything on their plate, you know, and, and, you know, we, you know, our parents are our mentors, our environment we live in, that's our mentor, you know, we follow the environment that we live in. And then people are used to eating large quantities of food. And, you know, you'll, you'll see people go into restaurants and there's huge amount of food on their plate. 
and they'll they'll clean it up you know almost to to the end and they don't and the more you stretch your stomach the more food you 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 know it you want and then the faster you eat you don't have time to digest it so then you don't even realize that you're full but you know and then you know you have we have people also that we were talking about that you know use it as a coping mechanism for comfort so we have society right here you know enabling us to to continue with our food eating disorder because they don't give us the proper portions yet you know weight watchers and many other you know companies will enforce proper proportions proper proportions but then you go to a restaurant there is no proper proportions you know and so you know people who are not aware of proper proportions are just eating for enjoyment they're eating you know it's a great way you know to you know feel good you know and and it and it, it's 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 exemplifying the wrong messages and and a lot of the food is packed with sugar packed with salt you know different ingredients that makes you want more and more and more you know so we're we're kind of trapped in a society that's given a lot of mixed messages it's telling us to eat healthy it's telling us to be organic but then you're getting a lot of food on the market in the in the in the in the uh, food stores that are not good for you that are doing the opposite for your health and then you have restaurants that are giving you large proportions and so you're battling there, there's so many different things especially if you have an eating disorder how do you stay healthy how do you accomplish you know be you know overcoming that eating disorder it's like being an alcoholic and working in a bar you know, it's like, you know, how do you, how do you cope? How do you get through it when we are not really helping people who have eating disorders and we're not helping people who want to stay thin, stay thin. We are working against them in a sense. Yeah, we, I, I will say our, 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 our society, when, when it comes to food, um, um, when it comes to food and capitalism and marketing um, and food production is not about people's relation, not about people's longevity, not about people having their bodies be at an, at an optimal place in terms of health, in terms of, of thriving. Um, like I believe in health at every size. And I believe like where a person's body lands is where that person's body lands. Um, mm -hmm. And with that being said, I, 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 you know, I, I agree in terms of how food is, how food is being marketed, how food is being produced, where can we, how, how, how can people access food? How can they not? Um, there's a very, um, a, a very manipulative message around food of saying like, it's like, first of all, it's like, first of all, you cannot be trusted to know what you what what you want and need, you cannot be trusted to eat when um, to eat what, what is what is nourishing, and I'll just say like, appropriate for, for you. Um, in terms of like knowing what your body needs um and so it's this immediate message of you are not to be trusted yeah. um, and then this and then the other messages around um the very manipulative messages around stay um be thin stay thin and if you're not thin it's all your fault um and in order to be thin you have to engage in disordered eating practices um and then all the messages around food and the portions and 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 how accessible it is to have you know the calorie dense foods um and how it, it just turns that, that 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 around so so much um in that um because all these foods were meant to be enjoyed and 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 it's part of our our lives and 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 eating for pleasure is a part of our, our lives and yet looking at all the stresses in our our society um uh, coping with food is, is something people do um in terms of because it, it is what they have in in front of them it's it's um and um so there's like there there's a lot of there is a lot of emotional eating in in, in folks and, and people really struggling and, and and suffering with that and yet i have yet to meet someone who says like i'm fine emotionally eating um people say i emotionally eat and this is also hard mm -hmm. um and um 
and yet not being not being in a society where we um we have this relationship with food where we trust ourselves more and more and we trust our society too as well of um of the foods that are that, that we are being served we, we're, we're given portions in restaurants where we feel like this this is nice um one of my favorite memories when my partner and i went to italy was just going to this like square this that this, this this piazza like it was evening it was early evening or around eight nine o'clock and there were probably 50 people in the square kind of chatting and engaging with each other and everybody had a cup of gelato mm -hmm. and i could tell it was part of it, it was part of that I, I didn't pick up energy of like oh my god i'm having ice cream i didn't see mm -hmm. like this like these like big um um portions of, of, of ice cream more like big but like the, the kind of like what, what, what you see um, in, in, in the United States what, what feels like this like this this bowl um, everyone yeah. was just having their cup and enjoying it and I and I could see like and then people finished and then people continued the conversation or they left and then new people came in and it was just this flow um, and it was like we have ice cream at night it's summer it's nice um mm -hmm. and it feels it feels good um and i didn't hear like oh, the ca the calorie content in this and etc mm -hmm. and how many points do i can i you know it was just none of that um yeah. it was relaxed um it's like this is what a society and i'm not saying this is utopia and everything is perfect yeah but what i'm saying is like there was a moment there that i was like Oh, this is what it is to be in a relaxed place with a bunch of people enjoying ice cream that clearly is considered very decadent, is very loaded in our, in our society of like good foods, bad foods, as opposed to like, this is just pleasure. Yeah. This is enjoyment with each other. And so I'm just kind of like breathing right now a bit because like, wow, um, to have that. Um, and to note like that, that, that comes with so much privilege because yeah. in that Piazza or Square, I mean, that was a vacation place. And so right. people weren't worried about violence. Um, people, the, the, um, th there were so many factors in place to have that. And so you come to our United States and having to think about like, can people walk down the street and get ice cream like where um yeah. you know some places you could or as you're walking down what are you surrounded by um so and having to be really conscious about like well i want ice cream you know it's like yeah well, that's a lot of work <laughs> and living in a society where that may or may not be possible you might have to drive to get to get ice cream um right. so there's as you were talking, it's like, yeah, we, we don't live in a society where we are celebrating all of that, like the mm. ice cream, as well as the farmer's market and mm. what's in season right now, as well as trusting our food and knowing like food is produced for our health. It feels like what's in it. What are mm -hmm. the ingredients? And so we get caught up into food yep. labeling, which is very diet. And yet understanding that like, I don't trust a lot of our 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 production about yeah. uh, the food that that is being made for us because it is about profit yeah yeah and i also see even you know when we grew up around a, a media that consistently now talks about negative things and we have placed a lot of fear into people's you know into people's minds and people react off of fear it gives great ratings on tv but now we have behavior behavior from individuals that are fearful of everything you know and they are and they're skeptical of everything because fear brings skepticism and, and you know and then you're you're not trusty and 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 then you're not trusting towards people and and it's a very bad corrupting cycle you know where you know we should be we should be shown more positivity but it's the negativity that sells and and makes ratings but you know that itself is as harming people's minds and the way they think and the way they react 
And I, I think that that is, is, is very, very bad for us also. And for people with eating disorders and for people with, you know, trying to lose weight and, 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 and people who are trying to be healthy, all these things, having, having all this negativity around us and all this fearfulness around us, I think even makes it more difficult. Don't you think? Absolutely. Absolutely. As, as you were talking and talking about that, that kind of fear-based society that, that we live in, it's just, yeah, and we, we do. And, and given, um, given various realities for folks with, um, who, are, who are marginalized, folks who just don't have access and, and privilege to a lot of resources in, in society, um, you can see then when, when, when that starts to happen and that kind of compounding effect of just more, more fear base, more, you know, very harsh realities, like turning to food to cope makes sense. Turning to yeah. food to cope. Um, I mean, the folks whom I, 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 I work with, um, who, who share with me just some of their eating disorder behaviors, I mean, what they're also sharing with me is like, like my life is really hard. Um, and I'm having trouble making my putting, I'm having trouble putting my life together. Yeah. Um, not like, well, lift yourself up by your bootstraps or come on, get, get disciplined. I mean, they're yeah. sharing that. Like, These are my realities. This is how I am trying to live my life. I I'm actually am trying to put it together, but I, I just have a society stacked up against me over and over again, like a, a, a bureaucracy stacked against me yeah. over and over again. I, and, and they're telling me like, I am trying, I'm trying here. Yeah. Um, and it, can you imagine thinking like, I, I, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. So why aren't I getting this outcome yeah. that given, my, given my, my efforts and when that happens and that disharmony happens, of course, someone's going to cope with food. Yeah. You know, I, and I work with someone who was like, doesn't have a car. And so has to do all this public transportation and everything keeps being stacked against her. And yeah. one thing she was saying was like, well, I did stop off at the drugstore and here's my binge food because I can't deal. And she goes, and I'm ashamed. And I'm like, it's, it's okay. I, I'm, I'm here to work with you to find other coping mechanisms. But I hear you on like, like I need something because things aren't working in my direction. And I've been told, and that's the other part of our American society is like, well, if you work hard enough and do the right things, you will accomplish anything. And that's right. just so not true. So not true. So yeah. not true. And, you know, to get back to eat, eating disorders and coping with, with the problems in their life through using food as a comfort source, what are some of the things that you would suggest to people? I know everybody's different. Everybody comes from a different environment, different problems, but are there some, some tips that you can give people who are struggling on a day-to-day -day basis using food as a coping mechanism and are struggling because they don't want to feel like this. They don't want to resort to food as a way to cope, but they don't know any other way. You know, what are some of your suggestions to help people? Hmm. I, um, first I want to say, because there's so much shame that that comes with that and, and, and a lot of isolation that that comes with that is like, like first and foremost, which I know sounds cliche, but I will say like, first you're, you're not alone. Mm -hmm. So many people struggle. Um, what I also want to say is it's not your fault, right. uh, but I also want to say it's, it's not because of you lack discipline, you're, you're, you're lazy, you're incompetent. I, so I, I want to give that message. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say like, you are absolutely deserving of having a harmonious relationship with food and you're mm -hmm. absolutely deserving to have a quality of life that is meaningful for you. Right. So I think I want to set that premise um, and then ask folks like it's, it is a simultaneous of, what in your life needs addressing? What are what are your needs right now in life? And maybe because of our society, it's hard. It um, maybe a society like you are doing the best you can and you're not getting your needs met. And that is hard. That is yeah. absolutely hard. So it's not because you're not trying hard enough. And so if if, if folks can, so I, I if, if folks can hear that, 
and then saying because your your life is 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 that hard it makes sense that you're using food to cope absolutely and if there are ways that you can you can start to bring in other coping uh other uh, other other ways to cope um mm -hmm. and um it's not an easy switch so i'm not saying mm -hmm. just do this instead but what i'm saying more is that okay sometimes you do use food to cope sometimes something happens and it's hard yeah. okay you use food to cope if there are other ways of saying like ah, i I'm, I'm using food to cope can i can i do something else right now yes. um, instead um, I'm using food to cope. Um, um, I think folks also get caught up into when they overeat and then they feel like, well, I got to restrict now, as opposed to like what you can, what you can. And um, if you have the time and space for it is like, are you eating consistently? I mean, this is just, um, I'm getting really into nitty gritty, but saying like, are you eating consistent, consistently? So that way, when you feel the need to overeat, um, if you're eating consistently, um, your body does feel more does feel more nourished as opposed to the what feels compensatory of like, oh, I overate now I need to restrict, but then you're only setting yourself up to overeat again. Yeah. And so like, can you eat? Can you eat consistently during all this? Um, if there are um, may, um, are there people in your life that 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 you can talk to um 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 there are various um and folks can go to my to my website in the resource section of um there are various um support groups and, and online groups that are that are free and so it what starts to happen is um a lot of folks who who, who really struggle with with emotional eating, eating disorders, all kinds of eating disorder behaviors, often do this in isolation and feel mm -hmm. a lot of shame. And yeah. I want to encourage folks like the more you start to share your story on your terms, mm -hmm. on your terms of what feels comfortable sharing, the more we can start to bring down the shame aspect. Um, yes. And when that starts to happen, um, it won't also be this kind of um, what can feel very um, like a vicious trap of like, I'm really, I'm really ashamed that I'm doing this. So I'm going to keep doing this. Oh, I'm so ashamed. And then you just pull away, pull away as opposed to I'm struggling. Yeah. And other people are struggling and it makes sense that you're using food to cope. And the more we can say I'm struggling, the more we can start to take away the shame aspect. Um, the more shame gets brought down, the yeah. more chance of like oh yeah i use food to cope and i wanted to do something different i use food to cope and it's 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 okay and i want to do something do something different um and folks share like and i want to figure out a way to have a quality of life that is meaningful for me and there are a lot of hard things in society right now yes for sure a hundred percent and you know, I find when a lot of people, um, they, they try to eat it, you know, when no one's, no one sees them, oh, I'm not very hungry. I'm not very hungry. And then later on in the middle of the night, when no one knows they're, they're, they're going for food and they're, you know, they're, they're overeating because they star themselves the whole, the whole day long, you know, or you have, you have people who are, you know, just, just struggling on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, I, I think it's really important and you made a good, a good, um, a good point is to get help, you know, to, to figure out the root cause of why you're using food to cope with the stresses in your life. What stresses are causing you to overeat? Why are you overeating? Why are you using food as a comfort zone? And then figure out, you know, once you figure out what the causes are to get help and, and to try to overcome it, it seems like, you know, verbalizing it to someone can really help, you know, expressing your emotions. And I feel sometimes we repress a lot of emotions in society. A lot of times we were always taught to, you know, to be strong, to be tough, especially men, you know, you know, don't let people know, you know, your weaknesses. And then people repress their emotions or they just don't know how to communicate well. And all those emotions become worse. You know, they don't go away. It just worsens inside of you. And sometimes people become numb and they don't even know how they feel anymore. 
And, you know, I feel like you mentioned getting support, getting get in professional help is great. Are there any other tactics, any other strategies that people can do at home to also help them, you know, in their process of overcoming a food disorder? Um, I would, I, um, I would say like maybe folks like I can't, I don't want to join a group right now or, or, or that, 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 that's too much for me. That, 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 that's hard. Then I would say, listen to a few podcasts of people sharing. And again, my, my, my website has a whole list of, of, of podcasts. Um, and, um, just to start to, to hear other voices, um, yeah. just to start to hear other perspectives, just to start to hear like in, in many ways around diet culture and how we're supposed to be disciplined with food. And I use these like this kind of white knuckling because I feel like that's the message we get yeah. um, that um, that you might start to realize like, oh, we've been kind of not given a great message around food. We've been kind of duped actually when it comes to our relationship with food and weight and, and our and our bodies. Um, and so I would, I would, you know, start to suggest that. Um, one of my favorite activists, Sonia Renee Taylor, she, she's, um, she started the body is not an apology. She talks so much around like body image and how, like, remember when you were a baby and how fascinated babies are with their bodies and, and, yeah. and themselves and and having this image of remember the first time a baby realized they had toes and they stuck their foot in their mouth and chewed because like what is this a foot <laughs> <You know? laughs> so and it's that reminder of like you once had that relationship with yourself yeah and, and your body and even that relationship with food and so if you could hold on to that and know like that was there once um and that um, and it might feel like that's been completely eroded and it's gone and it's taken uh, been it's been taken away. It's like, well, it's been chipped at. It's it's definitely been been wrecked, but it it's it's never been gone because yeah. you and you're not gone. And so it means like, how do I come back to that um, or just be moving in that direction when it can feel so hopeless? Yeah. A hundred percent. That's great advice. Cause I feel like sometimes, well, many times, you know, people think that they're all alone in it. You know, they, they feel, you know, that they're alone. Nobody knows what they're feeling in, and, and in re retrospect, there's, there's millions of people that are going through what they're going through and all they have to do is just vocalize it and, and reach out and they can, you know, meet somebody and your stories don't have to be the same. One little thing in, in someone else's story that you could relate to. And it, it's amazing the changes and, and the, the positive things that can come out of that too. You know, and sometimes it just by listening, like you said, to other podcasts, you know, it could make a light bulb go off because sometimes people have solutions that we didn't even think of, you know, ourselves and they can guide you in the, in the right direction. You know, help is always out there. I think we just have to, you know, be willing to receive it and not be in denial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if you had to take what we talked about today and you wanted to emphasize on a, a couple of, of important factors, what are some things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners that you feel are important, the things that you really wanted to get across today in your message? Hmm. I think, let's see, and I'm trying to narrow it down, but... <laughs> It's okay. You, you, you can mention as many as you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, one is um, that, you know, eating disorders are far more common than we think they are. Um, and particularly um, if, if you're concerned about a loved one um, in that, uh, and also we associate a lot of eating disorders around um, around weight and this mindset of like, well, they're not that thin, so they're okay if they have an yeah. eating disorder. And to say that the weight the weight factor is just one part of of an, an, an eating disorder. And so yeah. um, if you are noticing, particularly with 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 young ones, that 
you're you're noticing a degree of withdrawal of of, of pulling away um now check in around around behaviors um check in around around, around eating disorders um so just kind of that that mindset um and and asking folks like are, are, are you ready, and, and hopefully yes, ready to unlearn this kind of myth of who we think gets an, an eating disorder? Yeah. So that is the one takeaway I, I want to give folks. I also want to give folks to that um, there is a lot of help available. Um, the pandemic uh, has created a lot more online options for folks, and so there, there's more help available than, than 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 ever for folks who are struggling with all kinds of of eating disorders. Um, so I just want to like relay that. Um, also, um, want to relay that. Um, Diet culture is a is a is a serious thing, and and diet culture um, um, doesn't so much care about your health. And so, what we've been sold about weight and health are not true. Um, in that um, health is important, but to feel like health and weight go hand in hand, it's like absolutely not true. And that there are ways ways to um to have to be healthy that don't involve losing weight um there are, there are so many aspects of what you can do um for 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 your health um um so i i i just want to want to relay that um i also want to ask folks too of like who are like relent not not relent but like really struggling feel like i want to lose weight i want to lose weight i want to lose weight and ask folks like, what are you, what are you hoping? What will happen for you if mm-hmm. if you lose weight? And folks share like, well, I I want I want inclusion. I want I want um, attention. I want opportunity. I I want um, uh, I want love and respect. Um, and I want to say, like, all those things are yeses. And, and of course, you want all those things. That, that is about belonging and, and being mm-hmm. part of a community. Of course you do. But weight loss is not going to give you those things. It'll give it to you temporarily, perhaps. Yeah. But there will always be this pressure because if you, if and when you gain the weight back, you're out. So, ha- you know, um, and folks share, like, well, I want that for a little bit of, 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 uh, just a little bit of my life to have that and say like okay but is it worth it then to have that and to have that be taken away from you um because I, I i share with folks like pursuing health absolutely um and and i ask folks and i i and many times when i'm working with with other medical providers and there's this focus on weight loss i'll ask like but what if a person were to make some changes in their lives you know they yeah. were to eat with with people they were to bring in more we'll call it like fruits and vegetables they got into movement yeah. um, they were able to be more flexible they had energy they were sleeping better their cholesterol and hypertension went down um they had more did i say they had more energy and they, they mm-hmm. were just um but they didn't lose weight yeah it's like is it all not worth it then and so I just really want to ask, like, what if you did all those things, but your body was like, this is where I want to be. Would you say then this is all not worth it? Um, and of course, according to diet culture, the answer would be yes, because you didn't lose weight. So it's like yeah. important for us to think about like, wow, diet culture really doesn't have good values if we're yeah. doing all these things to take care of ourselves. And that's a good point, you know, because, you know, even for myself, like I have, you know, when I started going through menopause, I gained a few pounds. So, you know, I was like, I was, I was so, I was so, and I just, I was so determined to lose those pounds. Like I, I didn't like the way I looked, you know, it went onto my belly and no matter how hard I tried, I always stayed within that certain plateau go up a few pounds, go down a few pounds, go up a few downs, go down a few pounds. But I ate healthy. I did, you know, I exercised. I did everything I was supposed to. I was feeling good, but could not get rid of those pounds for 
I can't for any for shit. <laughs> I couldn't get rid of it. I was like, you know, so and I got so frustrated, but I was in good health. And I, I, I guarantee you, especially as you get older and you go through menopause, women and men go through menopause, you know, they, they have, you know, and, you know, you get to that point where your body isn't burning the fat or it might be comfortable where it is and say, hey, this is where we're supposed to be at, you know, and but the way society tells us it, it's the opposite, you know, so I, I think you make a really good point there. Right. And like. It's fascinating for me because I'm 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 53 and I've never received so many ads around menopause and and what's behind the the ads like it's it's so mixed um, and, and very mm -hmm. conflicted of, you know, like so much about like the weight gain, the weight gain, the weight gain and like, uh, OK, um, but then it's these mixed messages around like, you know, because there are other factors with, yes. with, with menopause. Um, and, and, and I feel like there's so much on weight gain and, and, and so much around taking all these medications for weight gain. Like, but there are other factors that come yes. with menopause and, and why can't we focus on, on, on that in terms yeah. of, you know, brain fog and sleep and, and, sexuality um mood and, changes and mood changes Fatigue. and I feel like we're, we're telling folks like we'll just just bear those but lose weight we don't yeah. care about these things but lose weight i'm like well i care about the other things and yeah he's gonna do what my body's gonna do um, yeah and so like if we're putting so much energy and resources into menopause weight which i find very conflict uh, I find very negative um, yeah but we're not putting um all the but we're not putting a, as enough resources into energy and sexuality where people are talking about like like my sex drive is has changed um it's painful having sex I'm like what about women's sexuality and still trying to like claim that um, yeah so I, I I I find like like um that that kind of um I find the message is still damaging and that it still continues to focus on 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 weight and appearance as opposed to there are other changes in the body too and if we help if we help women sleep better feel better have their you know being able to um to enjoy sex like yes that would help a lot oh 100 percent. when i did a talk about women and i i mentioned about I mentioned about menopause and I started mentioning about the symptoms. They would no, no one talked about weight gain. It was all the other symptoms that people were talking about. That's what they were interested in. You know, all the, change, all the things that you just mentioned, that's what they were interested in because those are the things that really stuck out to them. They didn't want to feel fatigue. They didn't want to feel foggy. They didn't want to feel, you know, have the mood swings. And they noticed that, you know, one minute they were happy and the next minute they were like a raging bull. You know, they didn't want to feel like that. You know, they wanted more control over their body. When they had intercourse, they wanted to not be painful and, and they wanted right. their sex drive back too, you know? So there was a lot of other issues that were more important to a, a woman, you know, than, than just a few pounds. Right. Absolutely. And why isn't that being embraced and talked about or feeling like, well, just grin and bear it or it's okay if you don't have sex anymore. I'm like, no, it isn't. No. <laughs> <laughs> or if you have sex, just kind of deal I'm like no I want to like sex. yeah you know <laughs> have, that's the whole point <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know yes. you know yes. you're not doing it for a job you're doing it for pleasure you know absolutely and that's absolutely. what you want to focus on yeah and yeah I, I think those are issues I think people have to really get their priorities in line what's important to them I think and, you know, and, and, and focus on if, if you're using food as a coping mechanism and you're, and you, you're, you're not being, you're not able to cope with life and you're using food as a way, then those are the things that you want to focus on. You know, you want to, you know, you want to reach out and get the help and, and overcome it, you know, but they're, when people are going through menopause and they're going through certain situations, they have to really think about what's really important, you know, and like you said, you know, our, our society with, with diet and culture, you know, it, it's, it's not so much about 
a few pounds. It's how we feel as a person. If we're feeling, if we've gained a few pounds, but we're taking care of ourselves and we feel great, that's what matters. Yeah. Yeah. And, and folks want help and folks seek help. And what I also want to share, um, is that, um, it's, um, unraveling your relationship with food and and and, and wanting to rebuild it um, does require patience and does mm -hmm. require time um, and many times you'll feel worse before you feel better because of all that pain and, and and so saying for folks like you know work with someone works with someone you feel a fit with but also knowing like it's it, it's as liberating as 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 doing that work is going to be. It's also going to be painful. Yeah. And there's no strict formula with that, folks. Like, I want structure. I I, I tell me what to do. And I'm like, it it doesn't mm -hmm. work that that way. I'm like, we'll, we'll find you know a path, but it isn't like formulaic. <laughs> a, a path. Um. And um. And um, and releasing pain, the only way is to go, as we know, is like, we, we have to go through it and we have to yeah. feel it. And, and that's where I say it, 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 it gets worse before it gets better because yes. it means we have to feel the pain. Um, and how do we, how do we work on having, you know, a container and what, and, um, and a, and a space for that as you move forward, um, because I do want to acknowledge, like, like folks, like share, like this is a painful relationship that I have with food. I'm like, yeah. of course, it is. Of course it is. It's it's very painful because it's so primal, and it's like our, our one of our very first relationships we've ever had is with food. Yeah. So to try to come back to that does involve releasing pain, and yeah. so I, I want to like tell folks that. Um, please don't like shy away with like, like if, if, if you started with this and, and explore and realize this is incredibly painful. It's like, yes, it is incredibly painful. Yeah. There's no strict formula about it. Um, it, um, because it's about you trusting yourself again. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, there are so many folks that, that, that want to do this work with, with you. Um, yeah. so, um, and there are folks there that want to hold this pain for you as you, as you move, move forward. And I have to agree with you because even when I was going through something, I reached out for help and it was, it's like an umbrella effect where you start, it's baby steps. And then you really face your pain. You face the, the, the situation and it is painful, but then once you, you face, you, you face the reasons you face the pain and you you start to overcome it. It's like a free experience. It's like a wonderful feeling. Like because once you you go through that painful effect and you you deal with those emotions that are causing you pain and you overcome those that pain, it's like afterwards. It's like it's like you can see the end of the rainbow. You know, it's it's a it's a wonderful feeling, but it takes a lot of work, and you will you will have a, a painful experience because you're facing all the things inside you that are causing you pain to react the way you are. You know, and but then once you overcome it, it it's like a, a wonderful, free and you know feeling. You know, and you can move forward in life, and that's what the whole thing, even about eating disorders, is that you want to figure out what's causing it, you want to face the pain that you feel inside, and then you want to overcome it so you can move forward and have a healthy, happy, and productive life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And so what are some of the services that you provide? Um, I provide, like for folks in the state of California, I am, I am licensed in California um, and I, um, I see folks individually to address their relationship with food and their bodies. Um, also, um, I provide, I provide trainings um, for folks uh, for, um, for schools and for healthcare settings and for mental health clinics um, and various community organizations around um, around eating disorders, as well as um, body image um, 
issues and, and, and how when folks are working, let's say, in a mental health clinic and, and have, you know, clients coming in and saying, we, we, we need some we need some structure on, on addressing eating disorders, I, I, I provide that. Um, I also have a newsletter that comes out a few times a year. Um, and so folks can um, can come to my website and then click on there. There's a there's a sign up sheet and I address various aspects of of diet culture and eating disorders in my newsletter. Um, I also provide consultation for folks, whether it's a teacher or a, a therapist or a parent. Um, and who are saying, I, I'm working with someone and I feel like they have an eating disorder. Um, and I just, I, I need some consultation on, on, on how to work with this person. And so I also provide that as well. And so. Now, do you do anything online? Like, do you, do you have any consultations with people online or any coaching online? Yes, um, all of this can be in person or online. And so I even like the, the trainings that I do, they're either in person or online. And so I remember during the pandemic, I, um, I, I was doing like, it was like one week where I was like, this is this is so trippy. Because um, it was it was three trainings in one week. And one day I did a training for a health for a, a mental health clinic based in San Francisco. Literally the next day it was Texas. And the next day it was um, in Canada. And I was like, wow, like, <laughs> I'm like, I am all over the place, but like, and I I, I loved it, but I, I remember yeah. like, wow, I'm, I'm kind of traveling the world in my, in my online training right now. Um, but it was, um, so I, that is one thing that while, um, I I love doing in person training because I'm able to be in the room and all. I I I've done like so many online trainings and yeah. and and so I've been doing that from particularly since 2020. Um, you know, because of the pandemic, I guess yeah. been online. So I've been doing it for now the online trainings for four years now. So I've gotten the little system down. Like, all right, you know, worked out the kinks of like this is how to make it more interactive, more engaging, and so yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Now, where can people find you? What what website? You can come to my website at www.marcellaed, um, as in eating disorders, training.com. And there um, you'll see all my all my services there. I also want to note that um, I offer um, free con free 15 minutes consultation um, on anything from whether I, I want to talk about a training with you, you know, I just have this quick question about a client. Can I, can I talk to you about that? I'm like, absolutely. Or I'm kind of deciding if I, where I need to go for myself and my personal journey. Can I, can I talk to you for just 15 minutes? I'm trying to figure this out. Um, and so I want to say like, yes, to all that. And so, um, cause sometimes you just need like, look, I, I just, I just need some thoughts, um, and so I, um, or I'm trying to figure out what what to do. Can I just have 15 minutes to just just to kind of chat with you? I'm like, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Oh, that's so, wonderful. So we'll put that in the description box. Yes. What? I said that's my gift to folks. <laughs> I like that. I, I I'll put that in the description box so everybody can know where to contact you for the consultation, and your website address will be in our uh, description. And, you know, this has been amazing. Thank you so much, Dr. Masella, for coming on the show. This is something that's so important. And we have so many people who inquire to us about eating disorders and how to overcome it. So today was wonderful because you provided such great information that I think would be very beneficial to many of the listeners out there. So I just want to say thank you for taking the time to share this information and to help others. So I really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you, Stacey. It's been great um, interacting with you and loving. I, I just really loved our conversation and the questions you asked. So thank you so much for having me on your show. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you so much. And you have a great day. You too. <laughs>